In this video, I'll just quickly show you uh, all the features of Awesome Opt-in and how to go from start to finish in creating your pop-up. So the first thing I want to point out is this little area up here. Uh, you'll notice that there is an on and off um, toggle switch, and basically this just will turn your pop-up on or off. So if I click here, it will change to off, which means that your pop-up will be turned off, or if we click it again, it'll turn to on. Um, there's a preview button up here and this will always open up a preview of your pop-up um, in a separate tab in your browser. And then if you want to test your actual blog itself, then you'll probably need to use this clear cookies for testing feature um, just to make sure that your pop-up will load um, depending on some of the, the other settings that you have where you've enabled some cookies. So if for some reason when you're testing your, your actual blog where your pop-up is, um, and you don't see the pop-up, try clearing your cookies um, and then refresh the page and it should show up. If it doesn't, then you can always um, submit a support ticket and ask us um, any questions that you have. So um, let's go ahead and dive into this and um, start creating a pop-up. The first thing you need to do is click on design. Um, we first need to just choose a template. Um, and to do that, you can click on see other templates here. And currently we have um, 10 templates well, as I make this video, but we're going to be adding some new ones um, in the very near future. So check back to this page and you'll see some new templates added uh, very soon. So once you've chosen your template, then you want to click Apply Template. So currently we're just going to use Template 1. And you can always preview and just get a, a quick sample um, of that template. Then we want to click Update Settings. And then you can also change the background shading. Um, at 0%, that means that the background will be transparent. So it'll just completely be see-through and you won't be able to have any shading or fading out. Um, but if you have it at 100%, then that would make, make the background completely black. Um, and it would just shade out everything other than your pop-up. So let me just show you an example here. If I click Update Settings at 100%, if we preview this you'll see that the background went completely black. So if I go to 0% update, you'll see that the background didn't change at all. So you can change the, the background shading to whatever percent that you'd like and then just click update settings and uh, the settings will be saved. Uh, you can change the template color to any color that you'd like. You can actually add the, the color code down here if you'd like. Um, we're just going to keep it at the default color for this video. Click Update Settings, and let's just preview this just to see what it looks like. Okay, you'll notice that the background is shaded um, at about a 40% uh, opacity, and this color down here is still blue like it was by default. If we wanted to change that color, then we can exit off of that preview window. We can go to Template Color. Say if we just want to make that a little bit darker. So we'll go down here, choose that, click Update Settings. Let's preview it again. And you'll notice that this background color is now a little bit darker. So you can change this to any color that you'd like. Um, each template has different options that can be uh, changed. So for example, this one right here, this blue background would be changed. Um, this one over here, it could be this whole background. You can pretty much customize the templates to uh, whatever color you'd like to match your site. So once we're ready with this, we'll just make sure that it's updated and we'll go to email settings. And this is where you're going to add your autoresponder or opt-in code. So um, I'm going to go ahead and clear the existing code here and just add some sample code. You'll notice that we, you can use Aweber, GetResponse, iContact, um, or basically any other autoresponder opt-in. Um, but the ones that have been fully tested are Aweber, GetResponse, and iContact. Um, the others should work as long as they have a form tag within them um, for both name and email address inputs. Anyway, if you're using Aweber, GetResponse, or iContact, um, it's really easy and you just need to, to copy your opt-in form code into this box here. So I went ahead and grabbed some code from Aweber. Let's just copy all of this code paste it into here and click on detect settings 
and this is just going to detect the uh, name and email fields. The important thing is, is you'll notice that it found the name and email fields. And so we just need to make sure that these are attached to the proper fields. Um, you'll see that it automatically detected that. So there's really no changes needed um, in this case. So we'll just go ahead and click on Save Code and Continue. Uh, yes. Okay, so these settings have now been saved and it should be working with our AWeber um, opt-in. Um, you can change these settings if you'd like. Once you're done, just make sure you click on Save Settings and it's time to move on to a few other content settings. So here you can change the headline. Um, you'll notice that by default that text will be um, written into that field, but you can change that to whatever you'd like. And if I go through here in the pop-up, this part is the headline. This would be considered the subheadline. And then each of these are individual bullet points and you can change these to whatever you'd like. Now I do want to note that some of the pop-ups don't have bullet points or some of them may have um, five bullet points or six as opposed to four in this case. So if we go back to our content settings page, you notice down here it says bullets. And in this case there are four listed here. Well if you chose a template that only had three bullet points, then anything below the third bullet point, so in this case this one right here, would not show up on that pop-up. Okay, so if we want to change this, let's just change this to something so you can see it, make the change, get access to you can change the text color, let's make it red. Okay. that black. If we just want to have them enter their full name we can do something like that or email address. Privacy text, um, we'll keep this enabled and let's change this to your change this to get instant access. We can change the color, we'll keep it white um, bullet one, I'll just leave this like that for now. Um, if you want to change the product image, uh, you just need to make sure you upload a new image here, and the image should be no more than 240 pixels in width by 240 pixels in height. And once you're done, you can click on Save Settings, and we'll preview this just to show you a few of the changes that we made. Okay, you'll see that I changed the headline up here. Here's the subheadline and bullet points. And then this is the, the name input, and then this is the email input. Uh, your privacy is safe with us. That's the, the privacy text. And then here is our submit button. So if we were to sign up here, then it would add us to the AWeber contact form that we added under the email settings. Okay, so just a few more settings here with the pop-up, um, and these are pretty self-explanatory, but um, I'll go through them real quick. You'll s you'll notice that it says where to show up. You can show the pop-up on every single page or post of your entire blog if you'd like, um, and that's what it will be by default. But if you want to select posts, you can uh, you can choose this where it says posts, and then click Save Settings, and now it will show on every single blog post, but not on your blog pages. But if you also want to edit just individual posts, you can go to your post page, which is up here, or you can click that link that I just clicked on, and then go to the edit button for your individual post, and then scroll down, and you'll see this option right here. It says awesome opt-in options, um, enable or disable. Well, since it's checked, it'll be enabled, but now let's disable it from this blog post and now it'll show on all blog posts except for this one. Okay, so let's go back to Awesome Opt-in, the other settings. And the same goes with pages. If you selected pages here and then you wanted to edit individual pages, you can do that as well. But for now, let's just click on Everywhere. 
Okay, the pop-up would show uh, after the visitor gets to the site after two seconds. Let's just change that to one. Hide for five minutes after closing the pop-up. So what this means is that if the user closes the pop-up, then if they're still on the same page, after five minutes that pop-up will reopen. Okay, display five times per visitor. So if you had this set to, say, one minute after closing, what could happen is the user would close the pop-up after it appeared, one minute later it would open, and then it would do that five different times if the user stayed on the same same web page. But if you don't want this to ever appear to the visitor again, what you can do is just put this to one. So it'll only appear the first time that the visitor comes to the page. So then we'll click on Save Settings and we can preview this pop-up, make sure everything looks good. Okay, looks good, looks good. Um, if you want to restore the original settings, uh, we put this option here um, on the other settings page. So you can just click restore original settings and then click OK. But we're going we're gonna to leave this um, set to the settings that we customized. Now there's one other feature that you can do here with Awesome Opt-in and you can add an exit pop-up to your page. And what this will do is when the, when the visitor leaves your site, um, an exit pop-up dialog box will appear. And it's really easy. You can just click this uh, enable exit pop-up and enter your target URL to redirect to. So this will be the page that uh, the visitor will go to. So I'm just going to put awesomeopt-in.com. You can change this default text to whatever you'd like. Um, same with this down here. And we'll click Save Settings. And now let's just go over to our blog and I'm going to hit refresh and the exit pop-up should appear. Okay, here it is. If I click OK and then wait before you go, click cancel. Okay, cancel. And now I'm on that redirected page. So um, I'm on this page right here. Okay, so those are the main features um, available in Awesome Opt-in. If you have any other questions, um, please feel free to submit a support ticket. Um, a support desk is inainnovation.com forward slash support.